So this is the last video about particle systems, and I just want to kind of tack on one little additional thing, which is, you know, it's probably very clear to you from looking at all these examples and seeing everything that I've put up here um, in processing is that visual design and, uh, is not really part of this video series. You know, all the examples, we have these gray circles with black outlines, white background, whatever. But one thing we should mention is, you know, if you look at how particle systems are traditionally used, and I'm not ex suggesting you use them in a traditional way, but they're used to create smoke effects, fire effects, starry, glowy, wonderful um, kinds of things. And typically, this is not done by just drawing gray circles with black backgrounds. Typically, this is done by drawing each particle as a texture, as an image, as some bitmap set of pixels that you've designed in a particular way. So I just want to briefly um, talk about this and show a few things in a couple examples. So this is example uh, 4.8, um, which is just showing you it's kind of reworked the particle system a little bit, put it on the bottom instead of the top. Instead of gravity pulling things down, things are pushing up, and the, the particles are fading out more quickly. And they're all just drawn as white circles. And you know there's a wind force here that I can move the mouse around <laughs> if I stand out of the way, and it affects which way this is, is blowing. And it kind of has a little bit of a smoky, perhaps fiery effect. If I were more clever, I would add some oranges and reds, and maybe I could get it to be fire. So one thing that we could do with something like this to make it have a kind of even more of a smoke-like quality is instead of drawing circles, we could draw images. So if I go to this processing sketch and look at the data folder, there are a few different PNG files here. And I'm sorry, these are not very big. You can see I've got these PNG files which were made in Photoshop. This one I borrowed from a Flight 404 example, colorful, and this one I just made in Photoshop. And if I open it up uh, and zoom back out here, we can see here that what is this PNG? Uh, sorry. Uh, um, what is this PNG? But it is a bright center which gets darker and darker towards the outside and more and more transparent. So instead of a circle where the white color is uniform all the way throughout, it fades away as we get out towards the edges. So if I go back to the code and instead of drawing an ellipse with a fill, I draw that image with a tint. Right? Remember, this is what it looks like with the ellipse. Now if I hit save and run again, we can see this is what it looks like with that PNG. So I don't know how much you can tell here the difference, but you can see this kind of smoky-like quality to it with the PNG allows it to be more, I don't know, blended in somehow. Anyway, so this is kind of part one of this. The other thing I just wanted to mention, so that's drawing an image. Now how do you do that? Where do you put the image? In our examples, there's really very little here. We just see now that the particle itself has a P image variable. But one thing I want to point out about this is you might have thousands of particles. You don't want each particle to load the image in its constructor. You don't want to load the image here. You would not want to put particle load image texture right, or whatever it is, whatever the name of that file name is. You want to load the image just once for all of the particles. And that's done in this particular example in setup. Load image is called in setup. It's past that image. You can't really see uh, because I can't scroll up. Boy, I'm botching this one. It's passed to the particle system. The particle system knows about the image for all the particles. And the particle system itself, when it makes new particles, gives the particle that image. So that's just another structural thing that I wanted to mention. This is just like what we did. I totally screwed this up. Um, just like what we did with forces. We, the force was passed to the particle system, which was passed to all the particles. We want to do the same thing with the image. We want to make sure we load that image only once in setup. So I'm going to change something. I'm going to change this to colorful. And I'm going to run this with a uh, PNG that was taken from uh, a Flight 404 example. And if we go and look at, well, what does that PNG look like? It looks like this. You can see it's got a couple rings of color and it fades away towards the outside. So this is looking kind of insane uh, here, but let's, 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 uh, why do I want to use this image? So one thing is it's very big, and so um, I'm just going to, <laughs> mental note, prepare for these videos. Um, I'm just going to draw it a little bit smaller. You can see, okay, well, I kind of have this red thing, maybe it looks more like fire, maybe that's too small, I'm going to make it a lot bigger, I'm messing around, but what did I want to emphasize here? I want to emphasize something. This, first of all, is running very slow, and when we start to use image textures, this is a time where it might make sense to go to processing's P2D or P3D renderer. The P2D renderer, 
for example, it uses OpenGL hardware acceleration, which is very, very fast at drawing images, many, many images to the screen. And you can see here, now we have our kind of colorful particles, and it looks like there's maybe a glowy center, but something about this isn't quite right. It's not the effect that I was going for. If you've looked at any Flight 404 examples of particle systems from years ago in processing or the work um, that flight, uh, that, that's in Cinder these days, you'll see there's something else going on. And that trick is called additive blending. I'm gonna try to get through this video before I sneeze. The trick is called additive blending. Additive blending is available in P2D and P3D. It is a blend mode. What does it mean? When colors are blended, instead of averaging them together or other types of blending you could do, they're added together. As colors are layered, those RGB values are added on top of each other, meaning the color gets brighter and brighter. So if I just change this to blend mode add and run this again, you can see now I have this kind of glowy, fiery thing. And I, I would like to tweak this more and allow the particles to live longer and play with the size and the color. But this additive blending is a real way that you can make textures. And it works really well to get this kind of glow effect or a fire effect. Um, um, the, the blend mode that you choose of how you blend the particle textures on top of each other can be really important. So, redo this video later, but we'll leave it for now. Um, and so here's your exercise for yourself. One thing I would say that these examples don't do is all the particles have the same texture. How would you make a particle system where you pick randomly from an array of possible P images? Um, that's something you might, and how, and you might just try, like, give yourself a goal, like, I want to make it look like fire, I want to make it look like snow, I want to make it look like rain. What is a goal? Pick a goal and try to design particle textures that really create that feeling or that quality of that, um, that, and, and when you make something, I don't know, share it with the world, uh, email it, tweet it, I don't know, write a note and put it in the mail and I'll get the note and I don't know if I have an address, but whatever. Um, so, okay, so that's just what I wanted to mention. You can look at these examples, uh, 4.8, there's an additive blending example, 4.9, that you can look at um, for this as well. And I'm going to press a button here and, and whatever, stop this mess.